So good morning, everyone. And yes, so not much has been done with the membrane proteins in neutron crystallography. So I will be talking briefly about it today. So why we really want to do neutron crystallography? So as we know that we cannot study hydrogens with uh, X-rays due to their uh, inherent properties of uh, lower electron density. It's not visible in X-rays. However, there are some X-ray structures at subatomic resolutions where you can be you can see hydrogens, but not as clearly as in neutrons. If you see in this image, this is an X-ray structure of a soluble protein where there is not like very clean electron density around the hydrogens. But if you see in the neutron structure, it's like such a beautiful density around the hydrogens. So this is what uh, we try to find. And this is really important, especially when it comes to enzymatic mechanisms or uh, redox driven mechanisms in any of the systems. So that is really important. And that is what we can study with the neutron crystallography. And if we go to the PDB, uh, currently there are like very few neutron structures with none of the membrane protein structures deposited so far. However, there had been like few neutron structures uh, like studied, uh, but they are not deposited of membrane proteins. Uh, there are also few bottlenecks with neutron crystallography. Firstly, the weak flux of neutron beam, due to which uh, the problem comes of uh, growing very large crystals. And of course, this is major problem with membrane proteins because we always have issue of having enough protein to even go for uh, X-ray crystallography. Uh, another problem is negative coherent scattering of hydrogen, which creates background noise and also electron density cancellation. As you see here, if we uh, exchange this hydrogen, uh, with its counterpart, the deuterium, then you will see in this figure that in the sample environment, we exchanged H2O to D2O and slowly uh, the coherent diffraction peaks were like uh, visible uh, with time. So uh, that is what we uh, also try to do when we uh, grow crystals for neutron crystallography and we uh, exchange hydrogen to deuterium. And another major advantage of uh, deuterium labial is uh, uh, you can even go, uh, get away with like smaller crystals for neutron diffraction, which will be possible when ESS will be running. So labeling can be done in like three ways where you just simply dilute your uh, protein with the uh, deuterium or uh, you use uh, you produce the protein uh, uh, initially in the presence of deuterium that I will be, be discussing further. For this study, we, uh, we have to choose a protein which is like very well studied and highly stable because uh, neutron crystallography is a complementary approach. So we chose uh, OMPEF as the model membrane protein system for this study. Uh, and the best X-ray structure solved is at one point angstrom resolution, which is pretty good for us to begin with. Uh, also, Aryan has already mentioned that um, uh, in his previous papers as well. So uh, with the help of neutron crystallography, we can uh, study the how the membrane proteins are actually uh, like intact with the detergent uh, or in the membrane surface. So that will be really uh, interesting to see in future if we can do it with neutron crystallography. But in terms of uh, OMPEF, uh, we want to understand the uh, like flexibility of the water channel, uh, which involves like hydrogen network of many acidic and basic residues which can be further used to uh, kind of design the uh, pore of this uh, membrane protein, which is a really uh, potential, which has a potential role in drug resistance of bacteria. So yeah, what are the current strategies to produce deuterium labeled protein and what we did in our study, I will be discussing here briefly. So in the current strategy, uh, it is a very time consuming process because uh, uh, you, you inoculate your uh, bacterial uh, culture on LV media, then you have, um, then you move it to another uh, LV culture where uh, 
uh, initially you have glucose as the uh, carbon source but generally we use uh, in like for now the preferred carbon source is glycerol because deuterium labeled glucose is very expensive so to reduce the cost of the process we generally prefer uh, glycerol so then the bacterial colonies are adapted with the lb media uh, with glycerol and this is further moved to a slam culture after adapting uh, following this process two or three times we then move these we inoculate these colonies to a small culture where uh, we have a deuterated minimal media with a deuterated glycerol as the carbon source and we continuously repeat this process like for at least six times so that the growth rate of the bacteria is increased in the deuterated media and finally we re-inoculate this culture in a 150 ml deuterated media which is used as a starter culture for um, higher density culture or the large culture uh, currently mo uh, for most of the studies e coli is the preferred host because as we already discussed yesterday also like because of its easy genetic manipulation and yeah so um, in keeping all these points in mind we try to improve this uh, uh, method of uh, production of uh, deuterium level proteins where uh, one of the another phd student like who's a postdoc now so he um, he designed an a strain evolved strain uh, which has a better growth in deuterium so uh, i transformed the ompef plasmid in that strain and then from there we started purification which means we skip all the uh, initial steps of uh, adaptation and we directly switch to this step where we where we like inoculate the colonies and we uh, start the initial culture but in order to also reduce the hydrogen uh, transfer in the cells we grew the cells in uh, hydrogenated minimal media and then to give them less shock we first uh, made a deuterated minimal media and added hydrogenated glycerol instead of deuterated deuterated glycerol and we let it grow over time and from here we uh, we measured the uh, like optimum odi as, as generally we inoculate at like od 600 of 0.1 so we uh, like uh, centrifuge the uh, like optimum amount of cells and then we inoculate the bigger culture with the pellet instead of directly inoculating with the liquid this reduces the amount of transfer of hydrogen in the media all the purification of the um, of all the deuterated proteins is done in uh, hydrogenated uh, buffers and then in the end we do hd buffer exchange with emicon filters for the crystallization setup i have to mention here that in this study we use three different carbon sources to compare the yields and protein stability of ompef so uh, we produced protein in presence of hydrogenated glycerol deuterated glycerol and also we used rich media deuterated lg as the carbon source there are few uh, like shortcomings in this process firstly we sh it's always preferred like to use schanamycin resistance plasmid uh because uh, you keep the cells for long incubation so ampicillin resistance uh, might lead to leakage so we should avoid it and also uh, we should prefer t7 rna polymerase as the expression so initially it's really important to do expression trials for your protein as uh, the process is quite expensive so uh, it's really necessary uh, and also it's very uh, it can be very time consuming if the cells go in lag phase so it's uh, it's really uh, necessary to start with uh, an initial expression test and know where your uh, cells reach the optimum od or what is the best optimum od for your cells to be uh, induced and later on harvested so we did this short study and we compared all the uh, all the cells grown in different uh, medium with different carbon sources
So as you see here, that nutritive media took like 17 hours to reach optimum OD of uh, one where we usually induce the cells as compared to hydrogenated media, which took like nine hours. But this can sometimes change if there is a long lag phase. So this is really important to study. Moreover, we also optimize other factors like uh, if we start the culture at higher OD instead of 0.1, we realize we get higher protein yield and uh, optimum IPTG, of course, to get maximum protein yield because uh, you also get uh, protein yield is also reduced in deuterated media. So it's good to optimize as much as you can to get the highest protein yield. So uh, here we purified, uh, so once we get the optimum conditions, we purify, we produce the protein in large culture and then we purify it. So here we see the purified bands for uh, all the uh, proteins from different uh, media. And uh, the growth was quite comparable because from hydrogenated media, we got like one mix per liter and which was also comparable to the deuterated counterpart. Uh, and here, I mean, which is not uh, like this uh, yield is like quite good for a membrane protein because usually we don't get such high yields in membrane proteins. Um, and then to confirm that uh, how much was the deuteration level in the protein and if it was really uh, deuterated, we, uh, we, did we did mass spectrometry and compared the difference in uh, mass to uh, calculate the deuteration level. And as you can see that uh, we, our uh, protein was almost 100% uh, deuterated when it was, uh, when all the components in the media were, deut were uh, in deuterium. And uh, when we used deuterated algae as the carbon source, the protein was like 99% deuterated. We further uh, as, uh, have to go for structural studies. So uh, we also wanted to know the homogeneity and the stability of the samples. So we did some thermal stability assay by using manual DSF. And uh, we found that uh, deuterated protein is more stable than the uh, hydrogenated protein, which was expected because um, when the protein is uh, when the protein is in deuterium, then uh, and it is just XD, XD exchanged, then the hydrogen bonds are more stable, which makes it more uh, stable, and that is why the thermal unfolding was at higher temperature for. Uh, the deuterated protein than the like uh, hydrogenated protein. Also, since OMPEF is a trimeric protein, it was interesting to see that uh, the trimeric form was uh, was uh, like unfolding at higher temperature instead of like monomeric form being uh, stable until uh, like until the end. And this has been reported previously also with OMPEF uh, from. Um, other organisms, but not from E. coli. So this was an interesting uh, thing to know about the oligomeric structure of uh, OMPF. So in order to grow large tissues, we used many techniques like vapor diffusion, microdialysis, batch, uh, and uh, highlight and capillary counter diffusion. But we got like so far the largest crystals in two techniques like capillary counter diffusion and uh, vapor diffusion. Uh, where in capillary counter diffusion, we could go up to 150 micrometer. I think this can be still improved, uh, I would say. And this has been improved with uh, another membrane protein circa uh, done by another student in our network. Uh, but uh, for vapor diffusion, uh, in hydrogenated, we could go up to 1.2 millimeter. However, these crystals did not uh, like diffracted uh, at room temperature, which is the major requirement for neutron crystallography. So uh, we will be uh, using a cryo stream at neutron uh, instrument to uh, diffract these crystals. And when we uh, uh, simply HD exchanged, like we, we exchanged a reservoir solution in the wells of vapor diffusion, we could get the crystals up to 400 micrometer um, size. Uh, so once you optimize the conditions for uh, uh, crystallization in hydrogenated uh, buffers, 
only then it's uh, it's nice idea to move to deuterated uh, conditions and optimize it generally the conditions should be same but since the solubility of the protein is like affected in uh, deuterated media uh, uh it's nice to rescreen at least around the conditions where you got the pieces in hydrogenated uh, buffers so as you see that in the hydrogenated uh, when we use hydrogenated minimal media we got like uh, pretty nice uh, crystals as we see for uh, uh, ompf but uh, in the same conditions we did not get like as pretty crystals at hydrogenated uh, one uh, however these are kind of the first crystals i have from deuterated uh, 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 samples so far and uh, i will be diffracting them like uh, in this week uh, but we have a nice uh, diffraction from the uh, uh, protein purified from hydrogenated uh, medium. So to conclude, um, I think this protocol is pretty much good to go with. If you want to purify perdutrated membrane proteins just in your uh, lab without using any large fermenters. And we also observe that perdutration has like uh, also affects the physicochemical properties of proteins and uh, this, uh, this is a kind of a challenge because then you have to uh, maybe fine tune the crystallization conditions in deuterated uh, buffers and sometimes uh, it can be tricky. Um, moreover, deuteration also affects the secondary structure motifs and hydrophobic surface exposure during the unfolding event. So we can uh, even look into it into it future. And, uh, and these studies can also help us to uh, uh, study the interaction of protein over the, uh, like uh, with the detergents. Uh, the major limitations on neutron crystallography, which is this large crystal size and small unit cell volumes, which, which will not be, uh, whole once we uh, once ESS uh, is uh, running because of its high neutron reflux. So I would like to at last thank you, my supervisor, S. Cox Hanan, and class one Beckenfeld, in whose lab I work in Lund University, Zoe Fisher from ESS, from time to time helping me out, and Vinardus for designing the strain. Maria and Celeste from LP3 for uh, sometimes doing remote data collection for my crystals, large scale facilities, ILL and Maxford, and Professor Paul Neeson for uh, uh, allowing me to do some work on capillary counter diffusion in his lab, and my thesis committee members and whole RAM computing. In the last, I would like to suggest you to listen to this song because it's quite interesting and uh, they, it's a very cute song about uh, electrons and uh, neutrons. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm open for questions. Thank you so much, Swati. Uh, that's uh, brave to take on such a challenging project, but uh, that's, that's very good of you. That's great you, to hear. <laughs> So uh, we're a little bit late, uh, but I'll just take one question here at least. So uh, uh, have you considered macro seeding of the OMP F? Uh, yes, I, um, I didn't have time to show many things, but I tried micro seeding, macro seeding. Uh, micro seeding worked pretty well, but macro seeding was not, I was not very successful with macro seeding, uh, I would say, yeah. I had issues for to stabilize the membrane protein every time whenever I did that. 